This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the Nokia Lumia Icon. Yeah, it's the first Lumia without a number after the name. This one's exclusive to Verizon Wireless, and it's pretty much everything we hoped from for the Lumia 1520. Just a more manageable size package. We're going to look at it now. So this is the Nokia Lumia Icon, one of the few, if any, un unnumbered Lumias that get a name instead. Why? Because Verizon Wireless likes giving things names. And, you know, for better or worse, it has that distinctive Verizon styling. They seem to take all the Nokia phones and make them just a little bit more boxy. All the Lumia phones so far have been very attractive things, and this one, well, it has straight sides. As you saw, I was just standing it up on its end. And that makes it look a little bit thicker. There's no taper here, the way we'd see in other Lumia. It's not the end of the world. This is available in your choice of black or white, by the way. Now, as we turn it over, there's a little bit of a curve or a bulge there. It's kind of subtle. It kind of mirrors the curved glass on the front, which is nice looking. And that's just so they can make room for the 2420 milliamp battery. It's a pretty ample battery for a 5-inch smartphone. And all the internals that are in here, including a cutting-edge quad-core 2.2 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 CPU with 2 gigs of RAM. That's the same specs you'd find on a flagship Android phone. So that's pretty darn good. Windows phone used to lag behind. Not anymore. Like other flagship phones, this sells for $199 on contract on Verizon Wireless. It's exclusive to them worldwide. Will we see other variants for other carriers? Something in a similar vein? I certainly hope so, because it's a nice phone, other than the kind of, eh, styling. Polycarbonate back, metal frame all around. You can feel it, in fact, in the winter, the sides are kind of cool. It's interesting there. 20 megapixel pure view camera with dual LED flash. You're looking at basically the Nokia Lumia 1520 only shrunk down from 6 inches to a more manageable 5 inches. I love the Nokia Lumia 1520, but even for me, it was too much phone to handle. So this, this is kind of like the sweet spot. 5 inches these days is considered your normal size phone just about. Full HD 1920 by 1080 display, so you get more columns of icons on here. I like that. More information on the Windows Live Tile Experience running Windows Phone 8 here. This is an AMOLED display, so you get better than life colors, basically. Very vivid colors and very rich blacks. The whites aren't quite as white as, say, on an IPS display, but good enough, I think, for most people. It uses Nokia's clear black technology, which basically means it's AMOLED and you get rich blacks with that. It works with gloves. It has enhanced sensitivity. There's no Nokia glance feature here. I really miss that. It's kind of strange. You go to settings and you look at where that would be, and, well, it isn't there. So when it's turned off, it is turned off. That's all there is to it. It's actually very viewable outdoors, too. Super AMOLED displays, not so much. AMOLED, they can be. Nokia puts a lot of importance on that, and I think a lot of us do, too. You take your phone out outdoors, you actually want to see who's calling, don't you? On the bottom, we have our usual Windows Phone home button here, our search button, and our back button, which does double duty for multitasking. On the side, again, nice quality-looking piece. The black shows fingerprints a little bit, but not as much as you would think, but... I like the, the kind of color-coordinated buttons here. There's your volume controls right here, the power button in the middle. This is typical of Lumia phones. And over here, that's our dedicated camera button. also functions as the shutter button. Bottom has the micro USB port right here for data transfer and for charging. Little racing stripes here are antenna stripes. Nothing going on on that side. And up top, dead center, more racing stripes. And then we have our 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And a very fiddly SIM card slot here. No little paperclip pokey. You're supposed to use a fingernail. If you don't have much of a fingernail, good luck with that. Anyway, inside there is a nano SIM card slot. Since this is a Verizon phone, you're talking 4G LTE on Verizon Wireless and EVDO Rev A 3G in case you're not in a 4G coverage area. And it also has GSM quad band inside for world roaming, and that's unlocked. And it also has 3G HSPA. No, no, no LTE for GSM networks, though. Inside, we have Windows Phone 8. That's an operating system I like quite a lot. As always, you know, the app story is weaker still on Windows Phone compared to iOS. That is the iPhone or Android. But still, I think that at this point, most of the apps that people want are here. The Weather Channel is here. We've got even Instagram, you've got Facebook, you've got all sorts of good stuff on here. I think it's enough to keep most people entertained. And Nokia includes all their great stuff. You get Nokia Here maps with transit directions. They do very good mapping software. Also, their lenses for their camera, their special camera application itself, Nokia Cinemagraph, Nokia Storyteller, 
there's a lot of good software that's built on board. Plus, it's Windows, so you get the basic PIM applications, contacts, calendar, and you get Office as well. Now, this is a mobile version of Office. This is not Office like you're going to see on your desktop. And we'll take a look at the sample file so you get an idea of what you can do with it. This is a PowerPoint presentation right here. If you want to edit it, tap there. You can type, change what it says right there. It, it's pretty basic stuff for PowerPoint. Now, if we take a look at the Word document, you can see a little bit fancier here. They've got a document with some colors and some pictures. And if you want to do basic editing, you can do that here. I've selected a word, so you can do things like pick a color, bold, italic, cross through, basic stuff right there. And with Excel Sheet, you can get support for some minor formulas, that sort of thing. Certainly enough for light editing on the go. I think most people probably use their phones as viewers, really, rather than serious document composition products. Verizon bundles a few applications. They have NFL Mobile on here that's been their deal. What if you don't like something? You can press and hold and delete it. Not just the live tile. You can customize these, change their size, move them around. But any application that is here that Verizon has added, if you don't want it, tap and hold, uninstall, goodbye football. The phone has 32 gigs of storage. There is no micro SD card slot here, so that is what you get. There's about 26 gigs available for your use. Again, it has 2 gigs of RAM, dual band Wi Fi, 802.11ac, Bluetooth 4.0, NFC, and it has a GPS with GLONASS built in. Works good with the Nokia Maps, and we'll take a look at those. Also, with Nokia Drive. And here's Nokia Maps, and you can turn POIs on and off. You can see it's finding an awful lot of those, so say we want to find out. More about that, and it tells us what the name of the place is and how to get driving directions. And Nokia here, Drive, gives you a 3D view of the map with built-in turn-by-turn spoken navigation. Since the UI isn't customizable really on Windows Phone by manufacturers or by carriers, you're going to look at the same dialer here that you would on other phones. Big, easy to use. You also have access to your recent calls, to your contacts, that sort of thing. So how about call quality on this? It was just okay. It, it, Calls were intelligible, but not as super, super clear as Nokia's GSM phones. That's what we found with this guy right here. Data speeds, on the other hand, were pretty good. We used the speedtest.net application cross-platform, and data transfer speeds were typical for Verizon, anywhere from 8 to 16 megabit download per second. Phone does have the mobile hotspot feature in case you want to use this as a wireless modem for your tablet or your laptop. So how is this different from the Nokia Lumia 928, also available on Verizon? I, it's a lot faster, and the camera is a lot better on it. So that's what you're getting for your money here. It's also, I would say, probably a little more stylish. Neither of these are maybe the best-looking phones Nokia has ever turned out, but a bit more stylish. But seriously faster, and, and why does that matter? It, Windows Phone runs nicely on lower-end hardware, because in the future, when you want to get OS upgrades, a Windows Phone 8.1 is going to be coming out this year, and it is backward compatible with existing devices, you know that's going to run fast on it. Also, if you like to play 3D games, and there's a decent selection here. We have a lot of Xbox games and other games on here. We have Asphalt 8 Airborne on this, and we'll test it out so we can see how it plays. So we'll get ready to race, and right now we have volume set at about 50%. The rear firing mono speaker, not super duper loud. Nice to see Asphalt 8 is actually on here. That's currently the latest version of Asphalt. It's available also on Android and iOS. For real racing, they're still up to real racing 2 on Windows Phone. Real racing 3, not out yet. Certainly very fluid, nice looking graphics on this as always, it's just a pretty game. Plays very nicely. And it's as fast as any phone on the market, it should. Now how about web browsing? You get IE Mobile here. Everything has to use the IE engine, so it's not like Android where you can get very, very different web browsers if you want. It's more like iOS in that respect, and you can see what the on-screen keyboard looks like. Tap to switch to numbers and symbols. Tap to go back. Pretty, always a good keyboard. Well designed, so it seems like you're always just hitting the key that you intended to hit. And then we're loading our website, Mobile Tech Review, and we're using Verizon's network, not 
Wi-Fi to do that. Nice and quick. The whites are pretty darn white on this. It's a very nice looking display. Pinch zooming very fast. The latest version of IE for Windows Phone 8 is quite good. Now how about if we want to watch a video? How about the LG G Flex video? See how that plays. So it'll be HTML5 video, of course, not Flash. And for YouTube, there is no Microsoft dedicated YouTube client, probably because Microsoft and Google just don't get along real well for obvious reasons, but there's a third-party YouTube application that's very good that you can download for free. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's not every day we get to look at something different. And it's seen Looks great. Frame rates are excellent. Again, still doing this over Verizon's LTE network. So it's nice that it plays in line and full screen, just like that very fluidly. And now for the star of the show. That's Nokia's pure view 20 megapixel camera that we've got here. Backside illuminated sensor fast Carl Zeiss f2.4 lens can shoot 1080p video at a couple of different frame rates. And it can also shoot in DNG, that's digital raw format, which is pretty darn cool for you enthusiast photographer types. Since it's a pure view camera, what it does is it shoots a 5 megapixel and a 19 megapixel image. So you get the lower resolution image to work with. If you want to say, you know, send it to somebody via email, you don't really want a super high resolution fat file. And you've got the 19 megapixel as your reference larger image. It does the same thing as other Nokia cameras. The zoom isn't really destructive because what they do is they use the 19 megapixel as the oversample size. And then if you're using the 5 megapixel as your actual output, you've got all those extra pixels to work with on it. So what it's really doing is cropping rather than doing a digital zoom. Is it as good as the Nokia Lumia 1020 camera? No, it's not. Of course, that 41 megapixel camera is just to die for. It is very good and just as good as the Nokia Lumia 1520 that uses the same setup here. Really, it's one of the best camera phones on the market. So here we have a picture that took very high contrast setting. Lots of sun coming in through the window, hitting on the white sections of the cat. It did use the flash to properly expose things, but we hardly ever see that level of detail, honestly, when we try to shoot that particular shot, even with regular dedicated cameras. Outdoor shot, very detailed, very nice colors here, pretty accurate on the colors. It handles exposure very well. Once again, we don't have any white out on the water. You can see the ripples and the detail. It looks natural, but not over sharpened. If anything, Nokia avoids that digital over sharpening. They leave it up to you to use Photoshop or whatever image editor you want to sharpen things up if you feel that's necessary. And lastly, an image taken in shade still looks quite good. Colors are pretty accurate. These rocks here on some cameras tend to really white out, and that hasn't happened. And you can see the detail in the lava rocks there. Really, really nice. I mean, this is a good camera. Likewise, video is also quite pleasing on the camera. Now let's see how it actually does if you want to shoot a photo. And we have our friend the bath toy there, and this is Nokia's camera application. And right here you can see you can switch between video shooting, camera shooting, burst shooting, and here's white balance, all ISO, all sorts of settings are available here. You have quick access to the reframe functionality there and to the last picture you've taken, and even more settings. You can choose which Nokia lenses you might want to use. Use a timer, do bracketing, switch to the other camera. So one thing that Lumias have not been really quick at is focusing. So let's so the tap to focus was pretty good. We'll change our angle a little bit, get a little impossibly close almost for it to focus, but it's still managing, and we'll just hit that and let it focus. So it's definitely gotten a lot quicker. The, the processor helps, but it's also a little quicker than the 1520 that's running on a very fast CPU, so Nokia is just getting faster at this. Is it the best for sports photography? In good lighting, it's not bad. If, if you're in indoor lighting, that's not so great. It's still not the fastest to focus, but it's getting better. So as mentioned, 2420 milliamp per hour battery sealed inside, as usual, lithium ion polymer. It works with Qi wireless charging, so that's pretty cool. You don't have to need to buy a special back for this guy. If you have a, a Qi wireless charging platform, it's just going to work. Battery life, that's a pretty ample battery there. We had no trouble making it through the day, and that's hitting it pretty heavily, using it for a GPS navigation section to the store shooting some photos and videos, playing a few YouTube videos, playing music in the background using the Xbox Music Player, which is a very pleasant experience, testing out some games. 
What I did notice is if you play a lot of games, obviously battery life is going to be shorter. This is true of all phones, all computers. It gets a little bit warm at the bottom over here. You're not going to burn yourself. Also, if you're shooting lots of photos and videos, this higher megapixel camera here is just going to use up more battery power. So if you're a real shutterbug, you're going to get shorter battery life, but you should still make it through the entire day in a charge because even with my moderate to heavy use, by the end of the day, I still had 30% available. As you can tell from the angle of our shot here, viewing angles are good on this display, quite good in fact. 441 PPI pixel density, so that's one of the sharpest phones on the market. You're not going to see individual pixels. I don't care how good your eyes are. This is Gorilla Glass 3, so nice to know, especially because it is a curved glass where the glass sticks out a little bit. If you drop it face down, the glass will most assuredly be the thing that hits the ground. In terms of cross-platform benchmarks, there really aren't many that include Windows Phone, but obviously top-of-the-line processor here as fast as anything Android has to offer. And one test that is cross-platform is the SunSpider JavaScript test, where it scored 544 milliseconds, where lower numbers are better. So that's up there with the top Android phones and tablets. Still a little bit higher than iOS, the iPhone 5S, but very, very fast. Honestly, you're not going to be wanting for speed on this device. There's no lag anywhere. So that's the Nokia Lumia Icon, available now exclusively on Verizon Wireless in the United States. Hopefully we'll see something like this coming to other carriers in other countries soon. It certainly is one of the nicest Windows phones yet. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.